Hey guys, welcome back to the P Squared Biology Podcast. This time I have a guest related to me, my sister. Hi guys. Younger sister by two years. And this time, well I guess it could be called P Squared Biology Podcast because of my initials, but we also share the last name which starts with a P, so I guess that could mean it this time. You can laugh if you want. <laughs> okay, fake laugh. All right. I'm paid to laugh here. <laughs> nope, nobody's paid. <laughs> okay, so this time we're talking about memory. I gave Hope a few... Sorry if I use your name right. That's good. <laughs> we're not giving away last names, but... I gave Hope a list of articles that interested me. Apparently this one interested her the most. But I like this one. Uh, it's about memory and about memory storage and plasticity of memory. They tested on rodents, but, you know, rodents are mammals, we're mammals. And I forgot to ask, Hope, is there anything new and exciting going on? No, I don't think so. Uh, anything new with the kitties? She owns two cats. I have Dexter and Lucy. Dexter just turned three, so happy birthday to Dexter. Wow. I love you. Yeah, they're both pretty cute, but Lucy is the baby, so, you know, she gets the benefit of the doubt. If they had to eat one of them. Oh, I, I won't go into that. Okay, so this paper about memory plasticity, like I said, you know, I couldn't find this paper. I really wish I could, but, you know, I think the Science Daily covers the main points pretty good about how memory is pretty plastic. It it changes, of course. You know, you know that hope, right? Like, yeah. Basically, it's either use it or lose it. If you don't use something, you know, the more you learn, the more likely it is to get rewritten basically that's what they found here so through modeling and using 3d computer reconstructions they found that brain capacity memory capacity is 10 times greater than previously thought what are your thoughts hope i think that's crazy yeah <laughs> i mean because you think basically i think memory has a lot to do with survival so if you don't really need something you know, you think back to when we were just hunter gatherers. If you don't need, if you're not using something, why do you need to have it? And you're wasting resources storing that memory. But the more you learn, obviously, you you need more memory. That's just my thoughts. But have you ever wondered, like these people learn in multiple languages? Like, how the heck do they do that? Yeah, my fiance is Mexican, and he his first language that he ever learned was Spanish. So he talks to his parents in Spanish most of the time, and it's just crazy that he can move from one language to another in, like, one fluid motion. I'm trying to learn Spanish. It's going very slowly. But, yeah, it it is baffling, and it's crazy that children have a lot easier time learning multiple languages than adults do. Yeah, I definitely think that for sure. Like, I don't know if you remember Nativity, they had us learning Spanish a little bit. Yeah, I remember. I think if we would have stayed there, it probably would have been way too expensive for what it was worth. But, like, I remember learning a little bit of Spanish. Of course, it, it went away pretty quickly. Right, yeah. And then, you know, learning in high school, it's like, sure, you learn some phrases, you learn some sentence structures, but it's like, you don't know the language. Right, and I took French <laughs> in high school, and it was great. I was good at it, but after high school, I heck, I never used it, so I really don't remember much. Sure, I can count to ten. I know some food. I can say hello. I can say my name. But, yeah, if you're not using it on a regular basis, it's not going to stick in your head for years after. And that's what I was thinking with, especially the more complicated the memories are and the skills like I remember with piano I used to be able to play Silent Night like no problem had a bunch of chords and really complex and I could do it by memory and then like a week or two after I stopped doing it I just completely forgot or most of the majority of it yeah you had the I same experience with piano I don't know if I felt like I forgot it that quickly because even because I could play a pretty long song from Phantom, Phantom of the Opera from memory for, I want to say, a couple years after. But you were practicing it, like, for months on end. Yeah, I guess. Um, but, of course, after we got rid of the piano, heck, I, if I sat down, I don't probably couldn't play it 
Now, I still have the sheet music, so I could probably work my way back into it, but I certainly don't know it off the top of my head anymore. Yeah, and that just makes me think, like, sorry if I'm going off the cuff a little bit, but, like, you know, obviously memory is in your mind, but I feel like muscle memory, there's something to do with practicing a sport, especially something complex like tennis, and you can just do it, like, no problem, and then you you can not play for a few months, you know, not that I've ever given up for too, too long, and then, you know, you, you still know how to do it, like, and even walking, you know, you basically do it your whole life, but do you believe in muscle memory like that? I do, I mean, after I stopped playing tennis after high school, I didn't play it regularly much at all. If I were to play right now, like, I know the motion of how to do it. I probably just wouldn't be as accurate as I was when I was playing all the time. Yeah, and I think a lot of it, you know how to swing, and then when you mess up, you blame it on your your stroke. But I've, not to be vain or anything, but I've, I've taken video of me hitting against the backboard, you know, basically a wall yeah. that they have in parks that I guess they set up for racquetball mostly, but you can play tennis against it. And the ones I mess up the most, especially where I hit it over the wall somehow, like, my footwork will be really poor. Like, it'll just, it'll be bouncing somewhere where I'm not accustomed to hitting it. And right. I'll be in an awkward situation. I think that comes into play a lot, too. Right. It could just be your body doesn't remember how to do everything succinctly. Like, it probably remembers how to swing, but it doesn't know, doesn't remember how to position your body to get it just over the net right. It's probably just a lot of things all combined that make you not as good as you were before. Yeah, there's, there's so many good little details. Like, I remember after my first season digging in the Peace River, of course, you know, then it rains a bunch. It's too deep to dig. Mm-hmm. And you go back and dig again. And I thought I remembered how quickly you find good teeth. But no, you're most of the time you're digging. Well, depend on where you are and how many people have dug there, but... You know, you'll dig and dig and dig, and you'll you'll not find as much as you thought you found, like, that easily. And also, even little details, like, there's a bunch of freshwater clams, and I basically for, completely forgot about those the first time yeah. during the off-season somehow. Or, not completely, but enough where I just, I didn't remember it that well until I found them again. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I remember those. <laughs> like, do you ever feel like, you're on the verge of forgetting something and then when you're re-exposed to it you're like oh yeah yeah oh yeah definitely so i think most memory if i remember correctly from psychology taking that course and at usf that most memory you can't just pull out of your head like if i were to ask you what what do you remember learning from college like what comes to mind at first or do, do you have a blank No, what comes to mind, well, I studied economics, so what really comes to mind was my favorite class that I took was called Economics of Crime, so that probably is what comes to my head first. Or is that what you enjoyed the most? It's what I enjoyed the most. It was one of my favorite courses that I took. Sweet. But, I mean, I'm sure doing anything for four years, something comes to mind, but, you know, just putting people on the spot, obviously, sometimes your mind has a blank. But you you remember the stuff, but unless you really go back and look at the stuff, like, I remember for organic chemistry, I felt like I barely understood that much. But then when I looked back at the notes, I was like, oh yeah, I remember really trying my best. But it's, it, that was basically like another language. And the professor, I don't know if you ever had professors like this, but basically, you know, the course is hard enough, you know, with all the chemical reactions and they right. say not to memorize the reactions, but memorize, or I guess learn the ways that certain reagents react with other reagents. Mm-hmm. And basically, I was memorizing the chemical reactions, whereas you're supposed to be memorizing the steps or understanding the steps. And that's basically how I almost flunked it. And I, because there were some quizzes, you know, of course, most of the scores came from the test, but some of the quizzes I got zeros on. And that's the only course I've ever gotten zeros on a, an assignment. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a beast. But then I look back at the notes, or the past exams, 
even though I got really poor scores and only passed because of the super generous curves because basically everyone's failing. But I look back in the notes, I was like, oh, maybe I did know a little bit enough to, to get by. Well, yeah, that kind of reminds me when I, because in high school I took AP microeconomics. Unfortunately, I didn't pass the AP test, so I had to take it in college. But the professor that I had was a graduate professor. He was just teaching a beginner level course over the summer, and he was from Russia. He had a very thick accent, and he went through the material pretty quickly. And it was because it was a summer course, so we had less classes, but a lot of the kids had a lot of issues with that class. But since I had taken the AP course to it previously, like when he would go over the information in the lectures, sometimes I would be lost. But once I would go back to the textbook, I would know exactly what was going on because I felt like I remembered it from high school. So I get what you're saying. Yeah, I think memory has a lot to do with getting proficient at something because I remember AP English in college wasn't that hard on me at all. Hard for you me mean at in all. High school? No, high school sucked because I had a hard time writing for some reason. Like, even throughout elementary, like I would just stare at a topic and it would take me at least like 15 or 20 minutes before I started writing because I had to have like a brainstorm or get ideas to paper. And then I'd be rushing to the very last minute after I started writing. I don't know if that's how you did it at first. Or did you do like a constant steady pace? I feel like I did a pretty steady pace. I would jot down my ideas on paper first and then just kind of work off of it. Yeah, I don't know. Like even doing this talk, like it, it's a little bit nerve-wracking more than I thought. Um, but once you set your mind to something and get your memory, rejog your memory as I'm looking at my notes... But basically, the point I was trying to make was, basically, I think I had the memory of how to write, and I don't know if your college English classes were like this, but basically you were talking about your experiences, at least in the beginning of it. Yeah. That made me kind of nervy, but then I was like, hey, I know how to write. At least, I didn't pass the AP courses somehow, but I could just relax a little bit and have some fun. Right. Because I, I knew how to write. Oh, well, I was taking a little break to look at my notes again. My sister brought up a great point how memory isn't as set in stone as we think it is. And basically, when we remember something, it's most likely we're not remembering the original memory. We're remembering the, the last time we remembered it, correct? Yes, which is crazy. So I feel like as soon as I learn that, every time I think about a past memory, I try and think in much detail of that memory as possible. Because in my opinion, I don't want to lose any any details of my past. I don't know. I mean, Maybe it's, it's silly. If you really, I found, if you really want to retain that memory, you need to write it down. Like, especially the earlier you can, you can do it, and with the least amount of bias, uh you're more likely to accurately remember it. And also... That's true. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing with dream journals. I remember having to do one for a psychology class, doing a dream journal, and the teacher always said, have your notebook right by your bed so you can recall as much of it as possible. Because I'm sure everyone has had a dream and you wake up and you're like, wow, that was a crazy dream. And then when you try and tell someone about it later... <laughs> you really only remember maybe a fourth of it. And it's kind of disappointing because it probably was a great dream. Yeah, I was just listening. There's a great Joe Rogan podcast about dreaming. And basically, yeah, you forget it really quickly when you wake up. And that's that's what sucks about it, but it's just the way it is. And apparently the same holds true when you do drugs, like certain psychedelics. <laughs> you only retain the memory so long. But this... Again, this is about memory, not drugs. Uh, <laughs> and also, because I know memory is not as solid and concrete. Because I've heard how, especially when you're in a group and you don't remember something, how other people talking about it, it kind of, instead of remembering, you think you remember, but actually you're just trying to make sense of something and you actually make something up based on what they're saying. 
So I try to, if I don't know something and I don't remember it, I try not to get in that process of thinking that I remember something when I actually don't. Like, do you have any, any experiences with that? I don't... Not to put you on the spot, I'm just Right, wondering. I don't think I personally remember anything, but yeah, like, group think is... Is group think the same thing? Never mind, I don't think it is. I, I think it does have something to do with it, how groups... Because, you know, individuals are pretty rational, but once you're in a group, you're much more likely to behave irrationally. Yeah. Basically, like, pack mentality. Like, people think, you know, we're super smart, logical people, but we're just animals, you know. At the end of the day, you know, anything can happen if you trigger someone the wrong ways, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, even, like, the Mandela effect, where they remember something... And they definitely, they think they remember seeing something or hearing about something in a certain way. And, you know, they say, oh, some there's a glitch in the Matrix because I remember something happening this way for sure. But it was ac actually, from the start, it was something else. Right. And I think, honestly, it has to do with what we see in media or even in movies, on TV, and just how we talk to others about these certain things that can m morph how we think we remember them. I think it's mostly due to convenience, I think. Because, like, people with the show Sex and the City, they remember in the city. And also with, like, Star Wars, they remember Darth Vader saying, Luke, I am your father, not, no, I am your father. Because it's more convenient, is it not? Or I think it's someone made a mistake of saying the quote, or someone that's never watched the show Sex and the City, if you hear someone talking about it and they say the name quickly, it probably sounds like Sex in the City. Yeah. And so you just remember it incorrectly because you didn't recall it correctly the first time. And you see what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it really makes sense. I'm not calling these people dumb for believing that something was definitely a certain way they they sure as heck remember it but they just don't know the they don't realize the fallibility of memory right and i actually have some good examples of that effect if you're okay with yeah me quizzing sure you. go ahead all right do you remember on the brand of cereal raisin bran how yeah. it has a son um i'm pretty sure it does did it it did. Okay. It did have a son. Do you remember, does it have sunglasses? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Well, that's incorrect. What? <laughs> I did too. When I saw that, I was like, no way. It, it never has, had sunglasses? Never had sunglasses. Wow. Or another one, the Fruit of the Loom logo. Mm -hmm. You know, it has some fruit. Yeah, it's like grapes, a banana, and apple, right? And does it have anything else in there? Grapes. Do you ever remember it having a cornucopia behind all the fruit? What color is it? Brown. A cornucopia. The little horn basket that they have. It's mostly around Thanksgiving. No, I don't remember that. No, okay. I felt like I remembered it, but apparently it never had a cornucopia behind it. Oh, wow. Um, another one. I feel like I'm talking about a lot of logos. Um, no, that's fine. Tony the Tiger. Yeah. You know what he looks like? What color is his nose? I don't know. <laughs> you remember? Yeah, I remember. But what what would you think? Looking, remembering the image of Tony the Tiger on the cereal box, what I color? I would think it's the color of his skin, just orange, right? I mean, but what color are tiger's noses? They're not orange. It's not realistic. It's a cartoon tiger. Yeah, but... Okay, well, I guess you don't remember. But most people would think that it's black, like it's stripes. Okay. But actually, Tony the Tiger has a blue nose. Blue? Blue? Blue. Wow. Look it up. <laughs> um, here's one that's not a logo. Okay, do you remember Coco the Gorilla, who that is? Yeah. Coco the Gorilla was the one that had the kitten. Mm hmm Do you remember when Coco died? It, yeah, I, I heard this one. Apparently, I thought I heard it died... Even before I looked, I found this one online, but yeah, I know, it's it's not true, right? Right. 
which is crazy. But I guess it's because we always heard about Coco the Gorilla when they did, I, I want to say all of the articles that came out about Coco were from the 90s or earlier. Do you know for sure? Uh, I think I remember hearing about Coco in, when I was a kid. Yeah, so I want to say the 90s. So I guess we assume because it was so long ago that there's no way that that gorilla could still be alive, but she is. And maybe it has to do with people confusing Coco and Harambe, but that's a <laughs> totally different thing. Yeah, no, they're completely different. Coco <laughs> is a sign language one, right? Use... I think so, but I think it. Um, they also gave Coco a kitten and showed that. Oh, maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking of chimps. I'm I'm pretty sure gorillas. I wouldn't be surprised if they're capable of sign language. I think they are, um, but I have a few more if you're ready for them. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, so you remember OxyClean with Billy Mays? Yep. Do you remember how Oxy is spelled? O-X-Y. Or is it O-X-I? It's O-X-I. What? But everyone thinks it's O-X-Y. Yeah, I, I thought it was O-X-Y. Um, so the Statue of Liberty is located on an island. Yeah. Do you know the name of that island? Long right. Island? No. No. No, it's something else. It's on, it's on its own island. It's not that much bigger of a body of land so do you think it's located on ellis island or liberty island um i think i heard ellis or is that incorrect that is actually incorrect and wow. that's what i personally thought but yeah. it's actually on liberty island oh okay um let me... okay so before you finish i want to bring up one uh you remember toast tostino's pizza right yes did you know it's actually Totino's? No, I didn't. Yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty sure both of us said, even most people said Tostinos, but do you actually really remember seeing it say Tostinos on the paper? Right. I feel like no one reads the box. You just go <laughs> off of what other people say, and if they say it wrong, you're gonna keep saying it wrong. Yeah, and. You know, my memory's not perfect, but I clearly remember saying Tostinos, and it bugged me to no end, way more than the other ones, until I did more research, and I think I know why most people, or at least us, are saying it wrong. It's because of, there's a chip brand called Tostitos. Yeah, it's pretty similar. Yeah. So, I think that's why. So, do you have any more? Yeah. So, how do you think that the shoe brand Skechers is spelled? I know that for sure. It's S-K-E-T-C-H-E-R. And that's actually incorrect. There's no T. It's S-K-E-C-H-E-R-S. Skechers. Skechers. Oh, There's no okay. T in the middle. But yeah, I think if most people tried to spell it, they would put a T in there. I certainly know before I, kn I knew that, I would throw a T in there. Yeah, and I mean, even, like, growing up, I felt like Castro definitely dies sometime, but I didn't, I didn't remember for sure, so I didn't, I wasn't 100% sure that it ever happened or not. Apparently it happened like a year or two ago. Actually, I remember watching this on the news. He didn't die, but he was pretty sick, so then his brother oh, took over. That That's probably what it was. But yeah, I'm sure a lot of people thought, oh, Castro's not in power, he must be dead, but no. He was just sick. Yeah. Yeah. I Personally, this might be a little tangent, but I feel like schools rely on memorization too much and just regurgitating. Of course, it probably makes it easier having a heavy course load, but I feel like learning has taken a backseat to, to memorization a little bit. Have you felt like that sometimes? I felt like that sometimes, especially with the more s standardized testing being a big way that teachers are graded themselves, how they're, crap, I can't think of the word, but standardized testing has been such a big thing, so they have a core curriculum, and then all kids need to know this, but in reality, I think for the most part, it depends on what class it is. Say, take on history, you may... You may think that some kids need to learn specific facts about U.S. history or about world history, but I don't think that 
all courses need to have a standardized system of how it is. But even with history, I think for some kids, they would find it a lot more interesting if it was more, and Paul had brought this up, how they kids just need to show that they're learning something about it. Say you're learning about colonial history and every kid has to do a research paper on it and it can be on something specific. Some kid that likes um, weapon history can do a report on weaponry in that time period or someone wants to talk about the religions of that time period and someone else wants to talk about the fashion of that time period or um, the customs of that time period. I think it learning should be more fluid than what it's becoming. Yeah. You know what they some people say actually why we have standardized testing is because the government is trying to control what we think. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh probably not to that extreme, but I think definitely they have some say, I think especially with the FCAT and I've noticed even as a kid they try to promote like success stories and but it makes sense. And just uh, equality and all that good jazz. Right. And I guess because if we didn't have standardized testing, there would be no way to know if a teacher is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Are they actually educating their students? And I guess standardized testing is the easiest way yeah. to gauge that. But it certainly isn't the best way for students in the long haul. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And they say basically that high school prepares you for college and college prepares you for real life. But we all know that's not entirely true. Yeah. Not to blame the system for everything. But but I think in some ways an academic setting can't set someone up to know what to expect in the real world. I feel like you just have to experience it on your own. There's no way that... You can learn everything in a academic setting. Yeah. And it's talking about school, I completely missed the point of explaining the paper. The paper was called Long-Term Potentiation Expands Information Content of Hippocampal Dinate Gyrus Synapses. Basically, long-term memory has to do with long-term potentiation. That's how... Because basically memory... It's just a bunch of synapses sending signals to other parts of the brain. And as those synapses get bigger and they relay more chemicals and more information, that's how the memory is stored. And basically this paper found as you know rodents are learning, there's more of that activity, more long-term potentiation going on as they're learning and that makes other synapses get smaller and weaker. That's how you learn. You know, the more you use something, the more biochemistry that goes on. And I saw a video about this. It's, it's not the most exciting stuff. Did you check out the video of, in my notes about... I didn't. Yeah, it, it's pretty dry stuff. <laughs> but basically, there's biochemistry going on when you're thinking and, and remembering certain stuff. And that reminds me, uh, when you're pulling out information, say, from five, six, seven years ago, certain stuff you remember almost semi-regularly if not regularly you know it seems pretty recent but then when you remember other stuff from that time period it feels like forever ago you feel feel that same effect right yeah like for me is mostly high school pretty much sucked except for tennis so i remember that and i tried to apply it when i play tennis sometimes because i i knew i was practicing every day so i knew what worked and what didn't work Whereas I feel like, like with the social interaction has less to do with today, this day and age, so I don't use that information as much. Do you have any similar? Or I was going to bring up how high school tennis, you know, I made those videos talking about it because I want to, you know, I want to learn from it. But I just thought it was entertaining and, and I learned plenty about it. But then when I remember, like, after that, you started dating somebody our older brother started dating somebody and that feels like forever ago that's yeah, what's funny about it i see what you're saying and that reminds me you know i was only nine yeah 
I just turned nine when 9-11 happened back in 2001. And I remember bits and pieces of I was third grade. I didn't particularly know for sure what was going on on 9-11. I knew it was kind of bad and I don't I don't think we got out of school early, but I I heard people were jumping out of windows and I was like what's so special about that and we got a paper to bring home talking about it. And then I remember seeing it on TV like the towers go down and I was like what the heck? Like do you remember much about it? Yeah, I w- I remember I was in second grade and everyone was getting pulled out of class and I didn't understand why cuz we didn't. I didn't get pulled out of class and then when our mom picked us up. She told us a little bit about what was happening. And then I remember going home and watching it on TV. And it was pretty sad. I remember it being sad. It probably... And I felt like the saddest part was even days after it happened, they were still talking about it on the news and how they were still trying to look for people. And I was just like, wow, that is oh, crazy. I, I don't remember that part, but I just remember... like It was like an all day, all day kind of thing. And yeah. Especially when the plane landed, like, somewhere in the middle of the U.S. when it was supposed to go into, like, the White House or something. Oh. They were trying to go to the Pentagon. Yeah, the Pentagon. That, that's what I thought, but I didn't want to say it, say it wrong. Yeah. And even, like, I remember that we had Pizza Hut that night. Oh, I don't remember that either. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy how you remember tiny details like that. Yeah. Well, at least No, I, I remember Peppa came over and we were just looking at the TV, like, what the heck is going on? But yeah. And I I actually thought, because I wasn't that old, I thought we just remember, I didn't, because I didn't know the significance of it, like, as other things came up, I thought they would remember little bad stuff going on as much as 9-11, but I didn't realize it was like a completely, like, re- revolutionary act of terrorism. Yeah. I just remember hearing on the news that they were thinking about the U.S. going to war, and I was just being like, whoa, that's crazy. That that was crazy, but even here, we can see, like, Hope remembers certain little details that I don't, and certainly for other stuff, I probably remember little details that she doesn't. Right. Um, Like, do you remember me... I mean, you probably remember when I used your tent well it's my tennis racket because i used it the first year at strawberry crest and then you used it the next year yeah okay so the battle lock no the dunlop the dunlop yeah. yeah i'm trying to think of a good example like see this is well i was just thinking because i'm trying to think of a good hobby to get into so i'm trying to think of like things that i did as a kid that i really enjoyed and recently i've been thinking about I was in Girl Scouts from, I want to say, third grade to when I was a freshman in high school. And we did a lot of fun stuff in my troop, and I was just remembering how we went to Georgia quite a few times, but I remember the one time we went to Georgia and we started something called geocaching, um, where people hide boxes or things somewhere and it has GPS coordinates and you have to go out and search for it and usually it's a box and people leave little trinkets you're supposed to take something and leave something a lot of times there's a little book in there so you can write your name and that you found it like write anything you want in there but if I try and think about and during that trip I was in seventh grade and if I try to think about something like if I try to think about what I did on a day-to-day basis after like what I would do after I came home from school heck if I know I don't know (laughs) so yeah I remember I played video games a lot more back then right but it's crazy how I remember some things especially like that trip so vividly but other things not so much yeah it's because the more significant something is and the more you pull it out, the more you remember it. And then other stuff, it might stay there, but it'll get weaker and weaker over time. Yeah. And I had an example of that. Basically, when I had a job treating aquatic weeds and other just nuisance or un- unwanted pond vegetation, I was turning in a report, you know, it was just a normal day, 
and then somebody came up to me he came up he was like hey I know you like hey Paul what, what's going on and I'm like oh hey and I knew his face for sure but I didn't I couldn't remember if I knew him from work working at a grocery store or I, if I remember him from school and he was like oh yeah we used to work together back at the grocery store I was like oh yeah and then I started remembering but besides that I didn't know too much about him um, cause I guess he didn't work there too too long like working there for five for six and a half years so many people came and went and I you know I remember some of them much more than others especially being a quiet kid and not really talking to absolutely everybody a whole lot uh, do you have any examples of that like something coming back up that you thought that you almost forgot, but it was still there. I don't know. I feel like that happened a lot in college, but... Were you learning know. new stuff or just random stuff? Just random stuff being like, oh, I think I actually already know this. <laughs> but I, back to, I guess, memories that are very impactful. This just popped up in my head. I remember... In my 10th grade English course, we had to do a group presentation about African culture because we read a novel about it. Um, but when every, everyone had a speaking part during the presentation, of course, and everyone that was watching had to give comments, at least one comment about every person that spoke. And then at the end, you got all of your comments back about yourself and you had to read over them. And I just remember one of them being so, I wouldn't say hurtful, but I was just like, wow, someone said this was their only comment on the piece of paper was very forgettable. And I was like, <laughs> wow. Wait, this... Okay. Was this an Elmish school, college? No, this was high school. Hi high school. High school. Someone said that my part of the presentation was very forgettable. Wow. And, and uh, in some ways, I feel like that does... <laughs> affect me day to day mostly when I see someone from my past I'm always very hesitant to go say hello to them because what if they don't remember me <laughs> and I know that's so silly and so stupid but I feel like that one little dumb comment that someone wrote about a presentation that but that how... has that doesn't say anything about your quality of the presentation maybe no. they were just super tired and they say oh because I don't remember what she said. It must have been bad. I don't know. <laughs> but, and heck, I don't even remember what my part of the presentation was on. But I certainly remember that comment. <laughs> wow. Yeah, psychology is weird. Like, I mean, it makes sense the more you think about psychology. But, yeah, memories are more weird than than we realize. Kind of, That's like the main tangent of this. We're saying about how memory is weird, but... It goes to show, like, memory is, is, it changes all the time, and, you know, if you don't reinforce it, or just even talking with other people, like, when I'm with my family and we're talking about uh, bachelor parties, you know, or just going on road trips, like, they remember certain stuff that I don't, and, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, at least for me, what I've found is, you know, especially doing false hunting and learning a bunch of stuff about that and learning about animals I mean taking notes helps but I think the more I understand something the more likely I am to retain that information because I remember I had to memorize a lot of stuff in calculus and physics and chemistry because I didn't fully understand the the mechanisms of how they work so I had to memorize some formulas and all that stuff so if I took a test you know, I'd probably flunk it. But, you know, repetition is probably the main key, along with understanding something and having maybe having a mnemonic device, like, you know, like an acronym. Like Roy G. Biv for the rainbow color. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely agree with repetition being the key to success, at least for me. Um... I remember in elementary school having to do spelling tests. I was terrible at spelling because I could never sound out words in my head. It was just difficult for me. So I remember having to have my mom quiz me every night before the test. I would always get hundreds as long as I did that. 
but it would just I would just need like 30 minutes 30 or 40 minutes of working to get it really into my head yeah yeah because every time you make a memory you're making a pathway and where the the transfer of communications happens and there's plenty of biochemistry with the signals but there's some little things I'm surprised I still remember like that Skyrim came out on November 11, 2011. Obviously, yeah, I know it's funny. It's stupid, but it makes sense because I don't re originally remember it. I remember being on Reddit and somebody bringing up the topic was, what will you never forget? And that just like set off a light in my head like, oh, that makes sense. And then just out. I think memory is really selective, but probably as a consequence of just something making so much sense that you just at least for me I don't tend to forget little stuff that really makes sense like also the Spanish word for always is siempre and yeah I I can't really speak Spanish that well maybe if I practice it more but um and the way I it didn't mean seem to make sense like siempre always like those are two completely different words so I was like hmm how can I remember that for uh, just writing something or for a spelling test or not spelling test but just for like a general quiz or test and then I realized that it kind of resembled the word Sampras and if you know about tennis Pete Sampras was one of the greatest tennis players of all time or at least for the 90s so he pretty much always played great tennis and that's how I remember it that's how I still remember it to this day you know that was 10 years ago that I, I took Spanish or ten, 9 or 10 years ago are there any French phrases you, you're you surprised you still remember? I know that the number four, well, I'll count to four, is un, the trois, cat, cinq. Well, that's five. That was to five. But um, I remember my French teacher talking about how the number four sounds like the word cat. And I love cats, so I always forever remember that. <laughs> Which sounds really silly, but... I think because the Spanish word for cat is gato I think that it's just so weird I think I think that's how I remember it yeah gato I think dog is perro I have no idea how I why I remember that but I think perro it seems to make more sense for some reason no I'm not sure um I think that's about it uh you know just talking about memory and of course we had to use it a lot well, everybody uses memory, whether they realize it or not, to, you know, unless they have some kind of disorder. Because, you know, you're always relearning something, you're going to struggle in life. But I just wanted to, like, hey, thanks for listening for so long, we're going to give you some life hacks. That's basically why I, I talked about the tips and tricks. So I think that's about it. Well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks, you guys, for listening. Yeah, so this is a little bit more on psychology but of course it has to do with biology you know because biochemistry biology meaning the study of animals study of life or no that's zoology the study of animals biology study of life okay you guys get it that, that's basically why i made this podcast the p squared biology podcast because biology is such a broad topic you have anything to add nope yeah we're both pretty tired and hungry Wow, 50 minute mark, just about. Yeah, I, I think there's some pretty good stuff in there. Would you agree? I would agree. Are you glad I didn't just interview you? Yeah. I think at some points, I would have probably preferred that. If you want to do that sometime, I'm definitely down. Yeah, I'm down for that sometime. No, only if you want to, because <laughs> I don't want to drag you in here if you don't really want to. Now, you can be honest. If no. you don't want to hear about whales... <clears throat> No, I will. I'm nervous to listen to this one. I don't know how I'm going to feel about listening to myself for so many minutes. <laughs> no, I think we hit some pretty good points. Uh, basically, it was funny. I can edit this out if you want. But, you know, Hope was nervous and, you know, she was like, oh, where are we going to record? I'm like, okay, I'll, we'll probably do it in my room. And they're like, oh, we need it somewhere with natural light. I was like, you know we're just doing audio, right? She's like, what? <laughs> I'm like you didn't watch the first one, did you? <laughs> but it's all Guilty. good, you know. And I don't mind it if you guys nitpick. 
which videos you watch and which you don't, you know, everybody does it. I mean, it even surprises me sometimes, like, when I see how many YouTube videos I made, I'm like, man, I've w I'm wasting a lot of time on these videos. It's not wasting time. Yeah, if you're having fun, I don't, I don't think you're necessarily wasting time. No, even if no one watches it. Are you hoping that nobody watches it? No, I want people to watch it. Nah, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. But yeah, as long as you're not hurting anybody, you're having fun, you feel like you're getting somewhere, that's the main thing, just staying positive and just moving forward. Yeah, again, if you guys have any questions, suggestions... Uh, For future topics. Exactly. Like I say, basically at the end of pretty much every video, comment, like, subscribe, and uh, yep. Uh, see you guys around. Yep. See you next time. Just like, give them time to listen to the awesome dog song. Thumbs up for the dog song. Yep. Alright, see you guys.